Kia ora Year 12. This video is to help you with exercises 9C and 9D in the textbook, which go through the Poisson distribution. So there is one big new thing in this video, and then there's some practice doing a hypothesis test for a Poisson distribution, which is very similar to what we did a couple of weeks back when we looked at binomial distribution hypothesis testing. And I've just grabbed two questions from a November 2017 paper. So question one has got the big new thing that we come to in exercise 9c, and it's this. But let's just have a look at the question and think about what distribution this actually is best to use to model it. We've got one clover plant in 10,000 has got four leaves instead of three. And we're told here to use an approximating distribution, and that's going to turn out to be a Poisson distribution. But if we weren't told to use the approximating distribution, we'd be working with a binomial distribution. Because we have to find the probability that in a random sample of 2,000 clover plants, more than two will have four leaves. So if you think about it, you've got two outcomes. You've got that they either have four leaves or they, they have three leaves. And you've got a fixed number of trials, right? So you've got n is equal to 2,000. And we're told up here that the probability of a clover plant having four leaves instead of three is 1 in 10,000. So that's 0 0.00. .00 0, 1. So it's a really, really small probability. And if we wanted to work it out using the binomial distribution, in this case we could do that, right, but the numbers would be really, really small. So to do it with uh, an actual binomial distribution, we'd be figuring out the probability that x is greater than 2, so that's 1 minus the probability of x being 0, 1, or 2. And we'd be working with an n of 2,000 and a p of 0 0.0001. Now you can try doing this question with that um, approximation and see that we're going to get very, very close by using a Poisson approximation. And I've done some notes on this, um, and there's also a really good explanation in the textbook. But what we're going to do instead of using the binomial is we're going to do a Poisson approximation because it will be just a little bit faster. So to do this Poisson approximation, we've got n and we've got p. So we'll use the mean np for my estimate of lambda, right? This is the parameter that we need to do a Poisson probability. The conditions for this to work are the following. We have to have a really small mean. So np has to be below 5. And we have to have a big number of trials. n has to be below 50. And the other thing that we can say here is that p has to be small. And in the second part of this question, we're asked to justify using our distribution, and they're the three conditions we need to look at. So here, we've got x, the original, is binomial with n of 2,000, and p of 0 0.0001, 1 in 10,000. We're going to instead work with x dash, which is approximately Poisson, and lambda will equal np, and np will be 0 0.2, right? This number times this number. So we need to find the probability that we've got more than two four-leaf clovers, and it'll be 1 minus the probability of x equaling 0, 1, or 2. And that works out to be 1 minus e to the negative 0.2 plus lambda 0.2, times e to the negative 0.2 plus lambda squared over 2 factorial times e to the negative 0.2. Now you could chuck it into your calculator like that, but it will be faster if we do it like this. Take out the e to the negative 0.2 as a common factor and work out this bit here. So that's 0 0.04 over 2. And I got 1 minus 0.818731 times 1.22, and that gave me a very small probability of 0 0.001148, and when I round that to three significant figures, I get 0 0.00115 to three significant figures. And then in the second part, we had to justify the um, use of the approximating distribution. So that's pretty easy here. We've got n is equal to 2,000, which is greater than 50, and we've got p which is, what was P? P was 0 0.0001, which I would call very small, not just small. 
and NP is going to be point was point 0.2, which is less than 5. So there you go. So that's that part done. Okay, so that was all there was for that, and that's covered in exercise 9C. And then the next question is where we're going to do a hypothesis test, and that's included in 9D. But there's one more really useful thing that we haven't come across yet last term in this exercise, and that's the idea that with a Poisson distribution, we're going to often be given a time period. Um, it won't always be time. It might be area, or it could be something else, but quite often it's something like this. Um, we've got the number of sports injuries per month, and in the past that average of that has been 1.1 injuries. But then we're going to be asked a question that's about a different time period. So here, the principal wants to test, after some new stuff's been done, whether the average number of injuries has reduced, and she's measuring it over six months. And the really cool thing about the Poisson distribution is that we've got 1.1 as lambda per one month. If we want to work with a six-month time period, all we have to do is times lambda by that number. So you just have to watch out that you're always matching up the lambda with the time period that you've got. So let's just quickly read through the question. We've got to find the critical region for this hypothesis test that she's going to do, and she wants to use a 2% significance level, and we have to state the probability of a type 1 error, and then explain what a type 1 error is. So here we have to just find the critical region, but down here we have to actually carry out the test. So um, it's 10 marks altogether. I ended up doing some of the work for this up in here, and that's fine. That won't affect your marks. Just be really clear with what you're doing. Okay, so if we're looking for the critical region, let's just get on with it and set the hypothesis test up. Um, we are doing a one-sided hypothesis test because she's looking at, um, she's done some stuff, new safety guidelines, and she wants to test whether the number of injuries has reduced. So H0 is going to be lambda is equal to 6.6, .6, and H1 will be that lambda is less than 6.6, .6, and lambda is equal to the average rate of injuries per six months, right? So always put everything in context, and that's for A-level as well as um, for NCEA level three especially. Okay, now we're looking for a critical region, and we want a 2% significance level. So what we're looking for is when will I have less than 2% probability of getting a low outcome. So we're going to start with the probability that, that x is equal to 0 and work out what that is. So that's e to the negative 6.6, .6, which is 0 0.00136. So we're definitely going to be rejecting if we have no injuries. right? And then the probability that x equals 1 is lambda times the probability of x equals 0. And that's using the thing in 9b called the recurrence relation. So go back, go over that if you need to. So that's lambda over 1 times px equals 0. And that worked out to be 0 0.008978. So what we need to do with those is to figure out the probability of having 1 or lower. Just get rid of all of that from the earlier part. Right, so the probability of having x less than or equal to 1 works out to be 0 0.0103. Okay, so it looks like we're getting pretty close. The next thing we'll figure out is the probability that x is equal to 2. So that's going to be lambda on 2 times the probability that x equals 1. So I'm just using this to go quickly. And that works out to be 0 0.029629. So when we add that onto the last one, we get the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 of this plus this, which is 0 0.0400. So what we've found is that my critical region is going to be x less than or equal to 1. And the reason for that is that I'm looking for the cutoff point, right? So here, 
So we'll write down critical region or rejection region. As if I find one or fewer accidents in six months, right? And that's because the probability of X less than or equal to one is less than my significance level. But if I go to the next number up, that's greater than 0 0.02. So that's the first part of the question done. Uh, not quite. We now have to state the probability of a type 1 error. So a type 1 error is where you wrongly reject the null hypothesis. And that's going to happen here if we are rejecting, right? So, so a type 1 error is the probability that we wrongly reject. And we're going to reject if x is less than or equal to 1. So my type 1 error here is 0 0.0103. Okay, so that's six marks for all of that. Now, the next thing to do is to say, what do we mean by a type 1 error? Well, we've kind of just about already done that, but we're going to put it in context now. So a type 1 error is the um, risk that we wrongly conclude that the mean number of injuries now I'm writing this out slowly guys because it's really important that you put this into context the mean number of injuries has dropped below 1.1 per month right and so in this case that number is 0 0.0103 then the last thing we have to do in this question is we have to actually do the test but we've just about done it already right because we've done the first step here which is setting up my null hypotheses and we've got a rejection region so for part three H0 and H1 are set out in part one already. And if we've got two injuries, X equals two, we're not in the critical region. So we don't reject the null hy hypothesis. And we're gonna put that conclusion into plain English. We don't have enough evidence, or evidence I guess, we don't have enough evidence to conclude at a 2% significance level that the mean number of injuries has fallen. Okay, so there you go. Two um, problems that go through a lot of the things that are covered in 9C and 9D. Um, these come up all the time in A-level, and um, please just make sure that you go through all of the exercises I've put into the tracker sheet for um, 9C and 9D.